1978 for the price of $425 or about $2,000 in March 2024 dollars, you could have purchased this Kenwood KR-5030 AM FM stereo receiver. This guy was rated at 68 watts per channel into 8 ohms, both channels driven at not more than 0.1% and that was at 1 kilohertz. It's a very basic receiver with a phono input and auxiliary input and it does have some basic tone controls, it bass and treble controls and they are detented. The balance control has a center detent, the volume control is just uh, free turning, there's no detents in that. It also has a subsonic filter and a loudness filter. So it's kind of a basic stereo receiver for the time. I think the power rating was fairly decent back in 1978. And the other thing I will point out, I'll call this a nit as long as I'm talking about the unit, is that the on-off speaker switch is here so you have to turn it to the first detent is phones and then you can have speaker A, speaker B or A plus B but you're turning on and off the unit with the speaker switch which to me isn't a good thing to do but that's just the way that they did it. This particular one seems to work just fine after all these years but most receivers have a separate on off switch kind of thing going on so I would say that's a little quirk and so we'll take kind of a little tour on the front, the back, I'll pop the covers off, we'll look inside it and then, of course, I'll have data to see how it performed. And then I will tell you what it was like to listen to it and just use it. Here is a more intimate view of the Kenwood KR5030 receiver. It's pretty much a standard AM-FM receiver. It does have your FM signal strength and tuning indicator. It also has some positions here for FM muting. You can also put it on mono, FM mono, your am and then one phono input, one auxiliary input. You do have the ability for two uh, tape decks. And we do have a loudness switch and a subsonic filter. Bass and treble controls. And we do have a quarter inch headphone jack. Now, I'm not a fan of having the power on off switch as part of the speaker selector switch. I just guess they wanted to save money in some way, shape or form. But I'm not a fan of that. But it does have something a little bit more unusual that it does have a headphone positions. And I'm guessing that when you are in the speaker position, A, B or A plus B, you could also listen to your headphones if you wanted to. But if you put it solely on headphones, you won't get anything out of the speakers. So that's kind of the front of the receiver around back. We have our speaker connectors. Now, these are not banana plugs. They're the kind where you loosen them up and shove a wire or a spade lug in. You also have your switched and unswitched AC outlets, your rod antenna here. It does have an FMD emphasis setting here. And we have our tape monitor switch here with a DIN jack for uh, the tape A. This would be our tape B input. And then we have our phono input, auxiliary input, we have the ground for the phono, and then we have our AM and FM connectors over here. Here's what the KR5030 looks like once you take the cover off. You can see we have our output transistors here, power transformer here, power supply filter caps here, and our tuner section is here, and it just kind of gives an overall layout of how this guy is built. And this is a view looking from the bottom of the KR5030 and it just kind of shows you a little bit more about how this thing was built. Here we have the KR5030 putting out pretty close to 5 watts per channel into 8 ohms. You can see our THD is better than we'll say 0.09%. We're at least 77 dB of S and R. And the gain is set for about almost 30 dB. It just worked out that way. The volume and balance controls are very sensitive on this guy, even after being uh, cleaned and lubed. And overall, the THD plus noise is not too bad. Here we have the KR5030 putting out 5 watts or so into 4 ohm loads. And if you compare it with the 8 ohm load data, it's not a lot different. The SNRs might be a little bit better with the uh, 8 ohm loads, but 
Overall, I would say there's not a big difference between the two. Here we have the KR5030's frequency response from 20 hertz to 30 kilohertz. With it putting out 5 watts into 8 ohm loads, you can see that at 30 kilohertz, we're down only 6 tenths of a dB for the left channel and maybe 4 tenths of a dB for the right channel. And it looks pretty darn flat, and the channels are pretty well balanced through the use of the balance control. Here we have the KR5030 putting out 5 watts into 4 ohm loads this time. And you can see the frequency response is looking pretty good from 20 hertz to 30 kilohertz. We're down maybe, oh, at worst case, what, 0.8 dB here for the left channel and maybe 0.6 dB for the right channel. And overall, at the low end of the band, it looks really good. And I adjusted the balance to get the two channels as close as I could. Here we have the KR5030 putting out 68 watts at least into 8 ohms at 1 kilohertz. The specification is that with both channels driven, it should be able to put out 68 watts into 8 ohms at not more than 0.1% THD. We're about 0.2% THD on the right channel, and the left channel would be meeting the 0.1% uh, THD. SNRs above 85 dB. Uh, THD plus noise is uh, reasonable too. So overall, it's doing a pretty good job of meeting its specification. In case you were wondering, these are what the harmonics look like with the KR5030 putting out about 68 watts into 8 ohms. You can see that the odd or third harmonic is higher than the even or second harmonic, which is pretty much what you would anticipate would be the case with a solid state amplifier. Here we have the KR5030 putting out about 80 watts into 4 ohm loads. The specification is that at 1 kilohertz, the THD should be better than 0.1%. And we are indeed better than 0.1% for the left channel. And the right channel is maybe 0.23%. So it's not too far off on the right channel. But our SNRs are looking above 80. And we're still at about oh 29 and a half db of gain and in case you were wondering this is what the harmonics look like with 80 watts going into four ohm loads it's very similar to what it looks like with it putting out 68 watts into eight ohm loads this plot shows the kr5030's output impedance and this one has quite a bit of difference between the left and the right channels. Now, as far as how this equates to a damping factor, we get a damping uh, factor of about 9 for the right channel, and for the left channel, it's about 24. The spec was that the damping factor should be greater than 30. Here is a plot showing the KR5030's crosstalk from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz with the active channel putting out 5 watts into 8 ohms. There is not a specification for the crosstalk. The minimum crosstalk is at the high end of the band, which would be about 37 dB for the right channel to the left channel, or about, uh, looks like, 44 dB for the left channel to the right channel. Here is the KR5030's multi-tone response. Now, there is not a specification for this. It's putting out about 7 watts into 8 ohms and showing almost 30 dB of gain. The multi-tone response shows that we have a distortion-free range of between about 12 to maybe 14 bits on a good day for this old receiver. This is a plot of the IM distortion with 60 hertz and 7 kilohertz tones applied such that we're getting about 32 watts into 8 ohms, which is about half of the max power rating of 68 watts into 8 ohms. There is a specification for IM distortion in that it should be better than 0.05%. I'm pretty sure if I added up the harmonics into the uh, equation, that we would be more than 0.05%, but this kind of just gives you an idea of what it looks like. This plot shows the THD versus frequency for a couple different output power levels into 8 ohms from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The minus 5.5 would be a power level of about 32 watts, and minus 14.5 would be about 
four watts. The specification is that for half power, which would be uh, the minus 5.5s, uh, these two guys right here, the power should be better than 0.05%. Well, it's better than about point, I'll say 0.08%. So it's not too, too far off. And then it gets pretty good once you have some lower power output levels. Right now, I've got the auxiliary inputs terminated into shorts, and the volume control is still set for almost 30 dB of gain. And what we're looking at is the system noise level. It is, we'll say, minus 60 dBV down. Uh, this guy right here would be the 60 hertz uh, mains noise, and then you have 120, 180. So a lot of that is just the harmonics from the power supply. And once we get down to in this area here we're better than minus 80 dBV down. The KR5030 does have a specification that with A weighting applied which we have turned on and 150 millivolt signal we're pretty close to that. Our SNR should be about 95 dB and we're about 10 to 12 dB short of that. This plot shows the effect of the KR5030's two filters. Now this uh, thicker blue line going down the center, that's with everything set flat. If I flip on the loudness in red here, that trace at 100 hertz, the spec is it should have 9 dB of boost, and it does. Now the one in green here, this is the subsonic filter, and it drops the response down about a dB at 20 hertz. Here we have the THD SNR plot at 1 kilohertz with a 2.5 millivolt signal applied to the phono input and normally I test with a 5 millivolt signal but the specification was that with a 2.5 millivolt signal and A weighting applied it should have an SNR of at least 75 dB so we're I don't know 6 7 dB worse than that THD looks really good at 0.003 percent we'll say and the phono stage has about 35 and a half dB of gain. Now I am measuring from the phono input to the tape monitor record output. Here we have the KR5030's frequency response from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz of the phono stage and this is measured from the phono input to the tape monitor record output with a 2.5 or minus 52 dBV signal applied. The specification is that it should be plus or minus 3 tenths of a dB across the band with the RIAA weighting applied, which it is. So we're uh, just a little bit over that at the high end of the band, maybe uh, 4 tenths of a dB at 20 kilohertz for the left channel, and we're down as much as maybe 2 tenths of a dB. So pretty much it's meeting its specification requirement. As you saw from the test data, this particular Kenwood KR-5030 did a pretty good job on the bench of meeting its specifications. If it didn't meet them, it was off just a little bit here or there, depending on the channel. And overall, I thought it tested well. I thought the phono section actually tested well, too. And overall, it was in great shape. It's all original, as far as I can tell. It did come to me with a problem that one of the channels was not working, but when I tested it, the channel was working. It's possible that the speakers were not connected using the terminals in the back. They're, they're a little awkward, I think, and it's possible that the wires didn't make contact, and so they thought they were connected and they weren't. Overall, uh, other than the on-off switch being on the speaker switch, I, I think it's a pretty nice little unit and it certainly has uh, enough power for a lot of people's needs. It's a nice looking vintage unit. I did go in and clean all the uh, switches and the uh, pots and they're all nice and quiet now. It's a, it's a nice receiver. I was looking on eBay and saw them between $350 to $500 depending on their condition. As far as the sound of the unit, I hooked it up to the Wilson Watt 3 Puppy 2 loudspeakers and when I first start out I put in shorts into the auxiliary inputs and have the volume set for about halfway and I did not hear hardly any hiss and, and no hum. It was very quiet. I was kind of actually surprised. Very, very quiet for a receiver. 
Uh, there was a little hiss, but very little. And it sounded just fine. I like listening with the loudness on, and it, it just sounded good. I'm not really one to say, oh, the sound was this or the sound was that. It either sounds decent or it's got an issue here or there, or some distortion, but overall, it was just a pleasure to listen to. I think that my friend Deanna will enjoy listening to this. I think she's going to bring it to her uh, office at work. And it certainly would be uh, plenty of a receiver for something like that. Uh, I could get quite loud with it with the Wilson Watt 3 Puppy 2 speakers, about 92 dB SPL without really pushing anything. And, and it just sounded just fine. It's, I, I have no complaints about the sound of this guy. So if you happen to be in the market for one and you, you know, run into a yard sale or an estate sale and you have a chance to you know, listen to one or check it out or you get it for a really good price. So if doesn't work you have some money to get it fixed uh, it's a nice little basic receiver so I hope you enjoyed this video if you have some comments please leave them in the proper place and I will always respond or almost always respond and if you have not subscribed to the channel that would be great if you would do that to help the channel grow and of course as everybody says give it a thumbs up if you liked it and until next time have a great day or night.